All right. Okay, cool. Good evening, ladies. Excited to meet the women. Um, no, I definitely feel very privileged to be sharing alongside the women that I'm sharing with tonight. I feel like one of the best blessings that I've discovered growing up in this family of churches just like is the multi generational um, just gold mine that we have. And I'm just definitely very, very grateful and thankful just for all the wisdom in this room that has shaped me. But just that we get as as disciples, being a part of a family, right? We're definitely called to be sisters and walk alongside each other, even when our lives look very different. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the beauty of the class tonight, really capturing what godliness looks like in these different stages. And for me, I've definitely defined this to mean being grounded in his grace. Mm -hmm. And so living okay. in a godliness, walking through these different stages, is being grounded in his grace. As a 24-year-old single woman who's in a great dating relationship, yeah. the biggest threat I have in my, you know, comfort and security in God is trying to control my future, yeah. or at least attempting yeah. to control my future. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's something that I keep realizing over and over again that these waiting stages, these transitions, these changing periods of our life, they never stop. No. Yeah. They never end. Yeah. No one prepared me for that. <laughs> um, and I feel like as a woman, not having control is this constant denial of my nature and realizing, kind of discovering and surrendering to, this is just what it's going to be like mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> for the rest of my time here on earth mm -hmm. is definitely humbling. But our God is an attentive God. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to read his words tonight in Isaiah 54, 4 through 7. Give me an amen when you get there. Isaiah 54, verse 4 through 7. I'll go ahead and start. It says in verse 4, Do not be afraid. You will not be put to shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. For your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. The Lord will call you back as if you were a wife deserted and distressed in spirit, a wife who married young, only to be rejected, says your God. For a brief moment I abandon you, but with deep compassion, I will bring you back. I have been meditating and standing on these words since the time I discovered them in 2021. When this one boy... Um, who was like the only guy I liked in college, decided to do the mature thing and ghost me or drop all communication with me. Um, and funny enough, he came to his senses two years later, and here we are leading to the together. And if you want to know the whole story, it's definitely a ride. You can ask me later. But <laughs> I definitely remember that summer in 2021. I actually went on a hiking trip with some of my friends, and I remember just crying out to the mountains, like, men suck. <laughs> <laughs> and, and written on my heart. Mm -hmm. It has become the foundation for me in the waiting seasons, in the in-between stages. Mm -hmm. And I walk through the transition and change with a security not in who I was, as it says in verse 4, right? right. Verse 4 and verse, um, verse 6 yeah. really calling us to this. It's yeah. not about who we were. 
in our past sins, um, in our pasts, in the shame of our youth. And it's not in our future or who we will be, right? A wife, a mother, and a widow someday. But I find my comfort and my strength and my space of safety in the arms of the lover of my soul. And it's his love that I live for and I will always live for. What grounds me to his grace is not fixating on who I should be at this point or what life stage I should have hit at this point, but who my God is. And I literally, I will meditate over and over again, my maker, the almighty, the holy one, my husband, my redeemer. I'm in the hands of the God of all the earth. I love that. And I've meditated so much on just these couple of verses here. But it's so easy for me to try to grasp at some form of control, like staring at my calendar and just fixating on all the events that I have in the future that give me some sort of false security and validation and worth. Mm -hmm. Or just any kind of, you know, tangent like, okay, I can stand on this and I have security and and worth and identity in this. Mm -hmm. But on August 23rd, I celebrated 10 years of being a disciple and following Jesus. Yes. But in all the spiritual formation that can take place in that time, in a decade, I'm still healing from toxic shame that tells me I will never change, that my past mistakes and sins will always haunt me. And it's taken me almost 10 years to really, truly believe that I am clean and redeemed and safe in salvation. But even as the scripture hints at, it's this fear of shame and humiliation that makes me still hold on to trying to work for the salvation, trying to work for the security and this safety. And a lot of my discipleship looked like this strict legalistic repentance of guilt-based, performance-ridden me. Mm -hmm. And my eyes were always on me on how I could be better, how I wasn't enough, how I wasn't worthy of love. And I would work and I would work and I would work, always ending in a cycle of defeat. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm coming to this space of a difference in grace-based walk with God. Mm -hmm. And of course I continue to repent, cutting off sin and and striving after growth spiritually, maturity um, spiritually. But I'm not fixated and controlling of never being good enough, or Olivia not being spiritual enough, or worthy or secure enough, I don't take up my cross and deny myself, as we are called to do as disciples, to earn a love. But I do it because I am loved. To ground myself in godliness is to ground myself in grace. I fix my eyes on him, not this self-obsession of who I am or I'm not. And these in-between stages of life or waiting periods that we all experience, reaching that promotion at work, watching your kids get to a certain point, that certain point of the relationship, or a relationship, whatever it may be for you tonight, we are not women of fear or shame or regret. We are because he is. Mm -hmm. We are loved because he is love. Mm -hmm. And walking through this, this life with godliness and grace is being grounded not by who I am, but by whose I am. Okay. Hi, I'm here representing having little children in your house. <laughs> Season of life. Yes. Um, and I thought I'd kick off with a story of something that happened to me at 6 p.m. this evening before oh, coming here. Because okay. naturally, oh, if I'm speaking, my, story, my, my lesson is being lived out in my actual life. Right. Right before I come to speak. Right. So I'm upstairs finishing up my work day. I'm three days late on like a couple budget things that I have to put forward for work. For the 2025 budget and um, I text my husband like oh my gosh it's six o'clock I haven't written a single note for what I'm about to speak speak about at seven o'clock I'm just gonna spend the next 30 minutes in my office putting something together mm-hmm. he texts me two minutes later that's so great for you because your son just pooped his pants <laughs> and so I'm like cool 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 so he's screaming downstairs 
Um, he's my young, is, I have three boys. Um, eight, yeah, woo, us. <laughs> I have an eight-year-old, August. I have a five-year-old, Willem, who's going, who went to kindergarten for the first time this year. Yay. And then a three-year-old who is freshly potty trained, except for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So, I run downstairs because we have him in our sink closing him off because it's just gross um, and we can't do anything else with them other than hose him off in the sink so that's what's happening and I have like 15 minutes so I saw Olivia scrolling through all these beautiful notes that she wrote and I'm like cool I've got five lines and that was one of them and it was Clark's poopy story so that is like my literal life today um, and so I started preparing it is Super three boys. Um, I started preparing with the question of like, what do I actually feel in this season of life? Mm -hmm. And I started just listing out these things. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of feelings yes. in this particular yes. season of life. Many a up and many a down. And um, one word, few words that came to mind were overstimulated. Mm -hmm. I am mommied out, okay, at the end of every day. Not to mention, I lead two departments at my organization. I'm a global lead for two departments um, and also spinning up a new one. I'm responsible for five brands um, and over 70 people. I travel about six times a year internationally and then 20 trips domestically every year. So I'm just a busy lady, <laughs> you know? I'm very overstimulated in my life. I am, <clears throat> hold on, there's more. These are my other five things I wrote down. Um, I'm overextended, yeah. right? Overcommitted, probably. Mm. Poured out, in good and bad, of yeah. all of these, really. Right. I'm very tired mm. a lot of the times. A little irritable. I'm, on, I'm finishing up my period, so that's <laughs> even like exciting. Um, <laughs> not enough time in the day mm -hmm. to do what I want to do, yeah. right? Or what I feel like I need to do a lot of times. I am exhausted in this season of life, mm -hmm. right? Like, that is how I feel mm -hmm. so often, yeah. right? Thankfully, like, I, we, we serve a good God, and it's not always that feeling, but it's just that is what normal, that is what my baseline often mm -hmm. is, yeah. 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 right? It just feels all of those things. So mm -hmm. one of the things that I was, in, again, in reflecting about, the good and the bad, of course, of this particular season. One of the things that struck me as something that I feel um, that's really positive and really good in this particular season is that I also feel that I have had the most life-altering spiritual season mm -hmm. of my life mm -hmm. right now. A lot, if you don't have kids, there's a lot of cliches about having kids and they're all like super accurate. So it's like the best thing and the hardest thing. And you love those kids like you never knew was even possible. Like your husband love is like nothing compared to the way that you love those kids, right? It is just the most beautiful, beautiful experience to be a mother in this season of life and to see them just grow, even when they're pooping their pants, to see them grow and thrive and learn and discover um, and just be the little humans that you get to raise, right? Um, and so it's, it's been this really beautiful season as much as it is exhausting. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things um, that I have really clung to when I was pregnant with my first, I was so concerned about preparing for this child, mm -hmm. right? Getting advice, whether I asked for it or not, <laughs> getting advice, um, getting all of my, you know, the baby registry, all of the preparation um, for this baby. And I was probably about as prepared as any first time mom, you know, we're super prepared as first time moms, um, have every gadget and gizmo. But I think one of the things that I was completely unprepared for was the toll that it would take on me spiritually mm -hmm. to be a mom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that was something that I was so, I'm so grateful that God showed me that I needed to prepare for all the rest of my children mm -hmm. is to prepare not just in all the knickknacks and the cute little onesies, yeah. but also like spiritually prepare mm -hmm. to pour into these children, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that God um, blessed me with 
in my postpartum journey was the book by Francis Chan, Forgotten God. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend, if you haven't read it, I'm so sorry, you should, mm -hmm. because it's an amazing book that just dives into the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I think that all of those things that I feel, my new norm as a baseline of being a mother is what I struggled with so much after postpartum with the first one. And I realized that like, I really am not enough for these children. Mm -hmm. Like I actually am not. I do not actually have the energy for these kids. Mm -hmm. I do not have the patience for these children. There is not enough time in the day for any of it. Mm -hmm. And that is why he gave us the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I think that book for me was the real like the first chapter in my journey towards really understanding the Holy Spirit. So I want to go to John 16 <clears throat> because this is the this is a really great passage that really, you, you've all read it. I mean, most of us have read through John this period, right? But John 16 is all about the Holy Spirit. I'm just going to read it, um, reading 1 through 15, really. And this is the work of the Holy Spirit. All this I have told you so that you will not fall away. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think they are offering a service to God. They will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. I have told you this so that when their time comes, you will remember that I warned you about them. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. None of you ask me where are you going. Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about, oh, and about sin because people do not believe in me, and about righteousness because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer, and about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me, but he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said, to, said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. And in this passage, he kind of starts off by saying, you are going to be terribly persecuted. You are going to be up against the wall. People are going to be thinking they're doing the right thing, and they're totally not, right? And it just reminded me so much of this good that I wanted to do in the world, which is to be a good mother, right? Um, to be a good boss and wife and all of the above, right? And how up against the wall I often feel, how poured out, how strung out I often feel, and how the next part of this passage is about that's going to happen, totally normal mm -hmm. it's what you can expect i'm literally telling you to expect this mm -hmm. but i'm gonna give you the holy spirit mm -hmm. and that is the only thing mm -hmm. that is going to get you through being tired and exhausted and irritable and poop pants mm -hmm. you know that's what's going to get you through all of it is the holy spirit um, and that's what we have to lean on and i think about this particular season in life and just how exhausting and wrung out I feel, and how it is impossible without the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. um, I think that is the only way I'm able to walk graciously through this season, um, when I remember that I have him, right? And mm -hmm. with all of the lovely humans who help point me back to him, and the scripture that helps point me back to him. Um, but that is, that's it. That's the secret. That's the sauce. That's all I got. Is this season, it's Holy Spirit.
like, and I'm like, oh no, I'm over. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, we've been talking about transition and what that looks like through each season of life and where we are and the things that have happened in our lives and how we got there and how God has brought us through. Yeah. And at each point in our life, God will bring us through. Yeah. No matter what's going on, no matter what you've been through, it's God that's gonna bring us through. Yeah. And for me, my transition, I've been, you know, uh, single, I've been a mom with two little boys, mm -hmm. so I know the energy that it takes with boys. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, now for my life, it's a different phase. Mm -hmm. My life is a little different. Uh, my transition and my stage of life right now is more along my health, my mom, taking care of my mom, yeah. um, looking at adult kids um, and where they are, praying mm -hmm. for them. Um, wanting the best for them, and um, everything else that comes along. Right. So I'm gonna start with my journey. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna start the last two years. I don't want you to hear the whole thing. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. But um, in 2022 was a hard year for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I said I was gonna do this. <laughs> I'm trying to be positive. Um, it started with a series of health issues. Um, first, I got E. coli, um, and so um, I, we thought I had recovered from that. But then months later, I got COVID on top of that, and so I already have some issues with my kidneys. I already have autoimmune disease. Um, so my health in general, um, any attack to my immune system right. would weaken it. Mm -hmm. um, so um, it seemed like at the time, you know, life was going great, mm -hmm. but then it kind of came to a squeeching halt. Mm -hmm. And um, and I thought that, um, you know, from from the COVID and the E. coli that I had fully recovered, but I did not fully recover. Mm -hmm. um, in the same year, uh, my mom was going through some health issues too. So I was a caregiver for her. And, um, and so it was me going back and forth to the doctor plus taking her to the doctor and it was exhausting. Mm -hmm. um, I went through a series of tests I had um, a bone marrow biopsy, had kidney biopsy, lots of, um, they took lots of blood um, from me, but all the tests were inconclusive. They could not find out what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so I went back and forth to the doctor looking for answers, but they could not give me that one answer. Mm -hmm. uh, for you, it may be something different. Mm -hmm. That was, that's my journey. That's what I'm going on right now. For you, it may be your marriage, it may be menopause, it may be health concerns, it may be your own personal life, your walk with God spiritually, your children, and the list goes on. One of the greatest challenges is to learn how to move forward while we're going through all of that. Yeah. Those tough and painful situations, keeping our head high and doing it gracefully, which is very hard. Um, so how do we do this? How do we get through these tough times? What does it take to get through the tough times? How do we walk gracefully as we age? Yeah. Especially when, as we're aging, our physical life and our energy is diminishing. Mm -hmm. So how do we still walk with God in those times? Mm -hmm. So this is what I, um, lessons that I learned as I was going through this. Mm -hmm. um, just accepting my situation and trusting God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on. Um, just really making peace with where I am now today. Mm -hmm. Not trying to go back and rekindle you know, my health from 30 years ago because I can't get that back. Mm 
Um, just really acknowledging God and knowing that he did not make a mistake with me mm -hmm. uh, and accepting that. Realizing that I'm in the place where God wants me to be right now. Yeah. Even though I don't know his plan, I'm trusting that he has me where I, I need to be. Mm -hmm. And I, right now, I don't know what that is, mm -hmm. but I'm quite sure he's going to tell me what that is. Mm -hmm. um, being grateful for the experience mm -hmm. and the wisdom that comes from aging. Mm -hmm. I have learned a lot through my transition, um, especially with over the last two years of I can't control what's happening to me, but I can control how I respond. Yeah. Yeah. And my actions uh, is a lot. Yeah. Uh, understanding that every lesson makes us stronger if we let God in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have to walk with God and let God in. We can't do it by ourselves. Yeah. Uh, we need other people around us. We need kind of like that circle of friends, circle of people. I have circles of doctors that's going to really help me to get through this path. Mm -hmm. um, let's turn to Psalm 138, mm -hmm. verse 7. It says, though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With you, with your right hand, you save me. God, God is solid. Um, I need him to hold on to, otherwise I will fall. Um, things, um, around me may change, but God is always constant. Right. Um, let's turn to Psalm 143, verse 8. It says, Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I entrust my life. Do we entrust our lives to God? Mm -hmm. Do we trust him in knowing that um, he's, he's doing the right thing or do we question God? Mm -hmm. um, and um, think that he doesn't know what he's doing with our lives. Mm -hmm. um, how confident are we that as we age, uh, we do it with God? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the next point is being kind to myself and others. Um, making time for self-care. I had to make a lot of adjustments, um, both spiritually and physically. Um, just making sure that I'm having my quiet times and making sure that I'm staying connected to God. Sometimes my brain doesn't allow me to read a lot of stuff. So I have to do it in snippets, and that's okay. We can't be guilty if we're not having like a whole hour of quiet times. Do what you can, but let your heart be penetrated by the word of God, and that's what counts. Um, it's okay to acknowledge the pain. Um, it's okay to cry over the loss and the grief. Um, setting boundaries. Um, a lot of times I have to say no. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really talk about um, what I'm going through a lot, but I do tell people no, and I can tell by their face they don't understand. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that gets to me, and I feel like I have to kind of um, tell people and justify why I'm saying no, mm -hmm. but I've learned that I don't have to do that because um, if they really, and I'm not saying this to be mean or anything, but if people really want to know, they would ask. Mm -hmm. um, so um, just really learning to set boundaries. I even had to set boundaries with my mother. Um, with her health, um, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of energy. And sometimes I can't do the things she want me to do, but 
I have to say no to take care of myself first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, showing signs of aging, but still moving forward, focusing on what I can do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I go to the gym and it's funny, we're, the older people are in the back row, the younger <laughs> people are in the front. And we have our little pack and we talk and stuff. And But the cool thing is that we're encouraging each other and motivating each other to get through the class, which is super cool. Uh -huh. And um, no judgment or anything like that. Um, we also sit in the back because we know we've got parts that shape too. So. <laughs> we're not as toned anymore. So, so yeah, but it's great to have those circle of people around you that can help you and motivate you. They get laughing, just like we did right now. Sometimes I have to laugh at myself. Um, for all of you that's gone through menopause, you know what it's like. Um, sometimes you're laughing, sometimes you're crying, sometimes you're in bed, you put the covers on, you're taking them off, you got your fan, your portable fan around you, you're eating ice chips, you're putting your hand to head in the freezer, it's all kinds of fun that's going on. But, you know, the laughing helps to get, take away some of the pain and staying positive. Um, staying up on your doctor's visits. I am an advocate about um, pre preventive care. Um, just making sure that you're taking care of yourself and taking um, and going to the doctor when it hurt, when you can. Um, being kind to others. Um, through my transitions, I know I've said some hurtful things to people, I apologize for that, um, but when going through hard times, sometimes it's, it's hard and just look at yourself inwardly and not see the positive of it. And so what we do is we lash out to other people and lash out because we're hurting. Mm -hmm. And um, I've learned that that's not the right approach. That's not righteous. That's not the way that God wanted me to be. Mm -hmm. um, lashing out at other people um, as far as church hurts. We've been talking about a lot of church hurts. Um, and just really, there's a saying, hurt people hurt people. But that doesn't really have to happen. We don't have to hurt each other. We can't um, control what our outside factors are, the way that people treat us, but we can re um, respond and control how we react. Um, the one thing that you know my motto is right now is, I don't want to pass along that hurt to the next generation. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to see the pain um, inside of me and me not dealing with it in a righteous way. Mm -hmm. um, so I encourage us to try to break that cycle. Mm -hmm. Let's not hurt because we're hurting. Mm -hmm. uh, the, la the next one is avoiding a comparison trap. Uh, not preparing my situation and myself to others. It's so easy to think that, well, she's going through this, so she must be going through the same thing that I'm going through. And that, that's not true. It doesn't, it, it doesn't mean that we're having the same experience. I just remember the first time I went um, and met my hematologist, he came into the room with a puzzled look on his face and I just looked at him and he, he said, are you Miss Overstreet? <laughs> yeah, I'm in the room, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Mrs. Overstreet. And, the first, and then he said, you're not what I expected. And I just looked at him, I said, well, what do you mean by that? He said, you just don't look like a person whose blood work is like this. You should be sick of it. And you don't look that way. Um, and there, there was just a stereotype from him trying to compare me to other people that are other patients that he's seen. And we can do that with each other too. Yeah. Just compare um, our situation with each other's situation. Um, watch the insensitive words. Been there, done that. I know how you're feeling. 
But this can only make somebody um, feel like their situation is not important. Mm -hmm. uh, let's look over in Psalm 92. Verse 12. I'm sorry. It says, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no weak, weak, uh, wickedness in him. If we remain righteous, and this is what I had to teach myself, if I remain righteous, my life will flourish because God will be with me. Amen. I still bear fruit. It may be different fruit. It may be not as plump as it was when I was in my 30s, but I'm still gonna bear fruit. The Lord is upright. He is my rock. I know that Without him, I can't do anything. He is my rock. Right. Like Ebony was saying, with the Holy Spirit, we can do anything. Yeah. You know, to this day, uh, the doctors still don't know what's wrong with me. Uh, my numbers keep getting worse. Um, and... And I, I really don't know what the future hurts. Um, I went to the doctor Wednesday, last Wednesday and I got news that the track that I'm on, I will be on dialysis in three years. Mm -hmm. um, but my, no, I know my God is an awesome God. Yeah. And if I'm on dialysis, I just have to readjust my life mm -hmm. to fit whatever that is. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I have to keep going. Mm -hmm. um, love God, stay in his word, be faithful and true mm -hmm. to who he is. Mm -hmm. um, walking in our life of grace is doing it with God holding our hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm every step of the way yeah. and knowing that he loves us so dearly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Um, so I'm going to open it up to <coughs> any comments or